This episode of Make Live is brought to you by DigiKey. So at a hackerspace, you've got a lot of people coming together with a whole bunch of really creative ideas, making all sorts of really neat things, and then sharing it with other people. And we wanted a space like that for brewers. What we're making is a BOP, which is a brew on premises. And it's a space that has all of the equipment that anyone needs to come and make beer. So what we'll do is we'll share that with other people. They can come, make our recipes, make their own recipes, experiment, and learn to understand beer making and what it's all about. Uh, one thing about New York City Resistor, when they allowed us to teach our classes here, and the thing I noticed about the hacker people is that they all like beer, a bunch of beer drinkers. So we brew a beer for the classes, and then we let the Resistor guys uh, drink a lot of it, not all of it. We keep some. Beer making is taking malted sugars, adding hops, boiling it, fermenting it, bottling it, letting it sit for a while, and then you get to drink it. The first thing you would do would be to uh, steep some grain, which is known as a specialty grain. To uh, use them, you have to crush them first. Most of your homebrew supply shops will crush them for you, but uh, we have our own crusher because we are a homebrew supply shop. Then you, would, you steep them to add some sugar, color, and flavor. The reason why you do this is this is the main malt style for a beer. So a darker malt will make a darker beer like a stout, a lighter malt will make a lighter beer like a pale ale. So this is called first wort hopping, and uh, it's used in many styles of beer, especially in IPAs. This is where you add a small amount of your flavoring hops uh, before you boil. You add it while the grains are steeping. So a half hour has gone by and it's smelling wonderful and looking beautiful. What we do is we just take our grain bag out and let it drip. Okay, and just take that out. Now I'm going to add another two gallons of fresh water to the one gallon I already have in there to bring it to three gallons. Now we're making a two and a half gallon batch of beer, but we're boiling three gallons because we're going to lose a half gallon to evaporation. We're going to bring this to a boil. You can do this on your home stove. While you're bringing the wort to a boil, it's a good idea to occasionally stir it because there's sugar in the wort and the sugar can scorch on the bottom. Okay, now that that's come to a boil, we're going to turn the heat off and we're going to add our dry malt extract. This is going to add the bulk of the sugars and fermentables to the beer, to the wort. When you're doing a, uh, a more advanced brew, you would mash these, which means you would soak them in a certain degree of water and that would convert the sugars. But if you're doing a beginner's brew like we're doing today, uh, they sell an extract that does that first. They mash the barley and it uh, converts the starches to sugar. Then they take all the water out of it. Uh, and it comes in two different forms, either a, a liquid malt extract or a dry malt extract. Today we're using one that's just dry, it's a powder. You want to slowly add it in. While my partner, Douglas, stirs it. This will give the food to the yeast that the yeast will turn into alcohol. I'm going to light it up again and bring it to a boil. Now this is where you really want to watch out for a boil over. This will come to what is called the hot break. It is a coagulation of proteins that are in the, uh, in the malted barley and it will just actually foam right up and boil over. So you really have to keep an eye on it at this point. And here it comes up. See? Uh, uh. Once that hot break occurs, once those proteins coagulate, it, they'll fall back into the pot and you don't have to worry about the boil over anymore. At this point we will add our bittering hops which will boil for 60 minutes. But our next hop addition will be in 15 minutes. There are two different types of hop usages. One is a bittering hop which adds that bitter flavor to your beer and the other one is an aromatic or flavoring hop which you would add towards the end of the boil so that um, you don't boil out those aromatic oils. All right, so now that uh, we're done with 60 minutes of boil, we turn off the heat 
And we add our last hop addition, which is called Flame Out. This will give most of the uh, aromatics to this particular beer. This is a, a Kent Golding hop. Now that we've added the last hops, we can take this hot wort and very carefully put it into our ice bath, which you can kind of see down there. Now we want to be very careful that we don't get anything into the wort at this point. So what we're doing now is quickly cooling the wort. We want to get it to 70 degrees before we add the yeast. Um, the yeast likes to be pitched added between 70 and 80 degrees. Anything that touches a cool wort at this point now has to be sanitized. We have a bucket of sanitizer in our fermenter right now, so this is uh, sanitizing our fermenting bucket, which we're going to eventually put the wort into. And we put anything that needs to be sanitized, like our thermometer, in there. This foam is actually good. This will not affect the flavor of the beer at all. So I'm going to stick that in there. It's said that the brewer makes the wort and the yeast makes the beer. The brewer is the one who uh, puts whatever grains and whatever malts in the wort and whatever types of hops, um, different styles of hops and different times of putting the hops in. When you add the yeast, the yeast will now convert that sugar into alcohol, but it also creates different uh, flavors. We've cooled our beer down to 70 degrees. And what we're going to do now is strain the hops and the uh, break, with the hot break from before, uh, into a sanitized fermentation bucket. Then we're going to pour it into a sanitized kettle and back, and that will help aerate the uh, beer. A lot of the flavor of a beer actually comes from the yeast, and there's so many different yeasts that you can use. Uh, if you've ever had like a Belgian triple or a, or a Hogarth and a Belgian wit, that f flavor, that main flavor and aroma actually does come uh, more from the yeast than from the wort itself. This is to determine our original gravity. And this will tell us how much sugar we have in there. Ooh, it's looking good. So this is the yeast that we rehydrated earlier. And this is wort. It is now beer. So this is a cool, dark area and resistor where we'll let this beer ferment for three weeks. After that, you add a little bit more sugar, and then you put it into your bottles and cap them, and in two weeks, you'll have carbonated fresh beer.